Let's bring in our NFL analyst, Ty Halleck. Now he played seven seasons in the NFL with the Bears, the Lions, and the Jaguars. And Ty, you came close to getting into a Super Bowl with the Jags. I remember that old uh, commercial, the Klondike commercial. What would you give for a Klondike bar? What would you have given for a chance to play in this game? I, I tell you, ha having gone through the experience, I mean, Super Bowl's the pinnacle. Um, I don't know if there's anything worse getting close and not being able to go other than probably going and not winning. Mm. I mean, it's something that you just, it's everything that you work for in the National Football League. So for, for us, we had a great run in Jacksonville. We went out and beat Denver, quite frankly, the first year that Denver should have probably won the Super Bowl back then. And then we went and, and we beat Buffalo and Buffalo, Denver and Denver, and then we played New England in New England. And that was really the closest game. And that's the year that those guys, if you recall, then went on to play Brett Favre mm -hmm. and the Green Bay Packers uh, along with De and the whole group of the first kind of initial Brett Favre mystique deal. Uh, but, you know, we, remember, we, we almost got there and, and the uh, Carolina Panthers almost got there. So two of the expansion teams two years in almost got there. But as a player, extremely disappointed. But just as disappointing to get that far as it is to get in the first round that, you know, whether it was the Lions, whoever, just getting in and knowing you have a shot and not getting there is very, very tough. Years after your career, how crazy is it to look back and know that you shared a field with Elway and Favre and just some of the legends of the games, guys that are in that Hall of Fame? I think every year that you've kind of gone through and, and moved away from how special it was then, it continues to be, especially when you're seeing guys going into the Hall of Fame, uh, having played with guys like Barry Sanders, who's just absolutely incredible, one of the top 10 players of all time. And again, arguably, in my, and I'm biased, the best running back I, I ever was around. Now, he would tell you somebody different, but the reality of it is, yeah, those experiences, those opportunities, they're very, very special. All right, your top five, we've shown it all year long, and you've had the, the 49ers right near the top all year long, and you've had the Chiefs from day one in that top five, maybe dropped out once when Mahomes was hurt. But um, who do you like in this game? You know, I really like the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, and, and it goes week to week, but when you watch, I think overall, I think the best season has been the San Francisco 49ers. I think they're young, I think they're talented. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a good, solid quarterback. But what makes you wonder this last game, the way they ran the ball, the ball so much and ran for 220 yards and they didn't use Garoppolo as much, what are they going to do against Kansas City? Kansas City, mind you, was looking at a running back who had run 180 yards plus for the couple weeks before, and they shut him down very, very well. And then you add Patrick Mahomes, to me, one of the best players in the National Football League and, and one of those guys that just amazes you because of the, the, just the raw athletic talent. But he's also obviously a student of the game and very, very mindful of the, the mental side and preparation side of the game. You just see it. You can't be that creative and not know kind of what's going on, how plays are designed, and how your players are going to react to certain situations, unless you put yourself in that, but do a ton of study as well. So he's an unbelievable player. And I just, that's the edge that I think I give the Kansas City Chiefs going into the Super Bowl. But I, I see this as very close. Yeah. So, you know, Kyle Shanahan has this reputation as a genius play caller. And you, you think of that, you think of somebody who's going to be throwing the ball over the field. They threw eight passes in the NFC Championship game and just gashed the Green Bay defense with that running game. Do you expect the same kind of thing? And can the Chiefs, you know, what they did, we saw what they did to Henry, can they do the same thing to that 49er offense if they come out and run like they did? I wouldn't have thought of that, you know, the, going into this particular week. And quite frankly, of the upsets that you saw, you kind of felt like it would be the Tennessee Titans upsetting the Chiefs because of the way their defense is played than it would have been with the San Francisco 49ers and the Green Bay Packers. I, I think the Chiefs can because they did it with, in my mind, a better running back and a better line, maybe by margins, but mm -hmm. the running back for sure. I mean, at six, three, 250 pounds, that's a big difference between him and Mostert, who's a little bit more of a scat guy. Mm -hmm but still very good. The one thing you like about Kyle Shanahan is Kyle Shanahan hasn't fallen far from the tree. I mean, Mike Shanahan, if you remember back in the days of Denver Bronco football and when they did really well with Davis and those running backs was just that. It's angle blocking, it's down, down and around, it's pinch and pull. There's a lot of things where you're creating angles and giving the running backs those opportunities in lanes. And that's exactly what Kyle Shanahan has done with this offense. Now, would you be surprised if he came out slinging it? And if they get into one of those, if they fall behind early to Kansas City, 
and they've got to rely on Garoppolo. Are they in trouble, or can Garoppolo handle that if it becomes Garoppolo versus Mahomes? Well, I think if it's Garoppolo uh, versus Mahomes, I think there is a problem because I think Patrick Mahomes has showed over and over again he can sling it, create points. And look, they were down 24 to nothing against the Texans, for goodness sakes. They were down against Tennessee out of the gates, 17-7. He, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't shy away from it. He continues to lead. And I think that's part of the most impressive part about Mahomes is, is he's going to the sideline and going, guys, we got this. We got to settle down. We got to execute. And remember, we've talked about it for the last few weeks. He's got several options and has the ability to get it to them on timing routes. And he's got the ability to get to them by moving his feet, getting out of the pocket and delivering the football. I think Patrick Mahomes versus Garoppolo, there is a, a pretty good discrepancy there. And if I'm the San Francisco 49ers, I definitely want to run the football, and you'll probably see that early mm-hmm. because you don't want to you want to, you want to limit the opportunities that Kansas City has to have the ball. But if you get into a situation where you're tra- you, you know you're you're trailing 12, 14 points, whatever that case may be, and you're San Francisco, I think you're in some trouble. All right, put your GM hat on for a second, Ty, um, and you can steal any player off any roster in the league. Is Mahomes the guy? Because if I'm doing this, if I'm the GM that's building, that's the guy I'm stealing. I think you're 100% right, Jack. I mean, there's, there's really no mystery about it. Every football team starts with a quarterback. It's the reason why they get paid the way they do. And this kid at you know, 23, 24 years old, young, future, the whole deal, again, it's not just his physical attributes. He definitely has the strong arm. He's got good feet. He can run. He has this innate ability to figure out plays when they're broken, but he does because he understands his offense. The guy's a, a film a, a guy that watches a ton of film, is studying plays. He works well with his coaches. Everything you hear about this guy speaks intelligence on the football field and off the football field, all while applying some superior athletic ability in his arm and his feet that he's shown consistently over the time. There's a lot of good football players out there, but I think any NFL GM would certainly start right now, today, with Patrick Mahomes. All right, so you've got a very young coach who's been around the game all his life uh, with Shanahan, and then you've got Andy Reid, who the only thing missing from that resume is that Super Bowl championship. Second team he's taken to the Super Bowl. Uh, coaching matchup advantage who? I think the advantage really is, is Reid. He's had the experience. I also think, though, the the advantage for Shanahan really is less pressure than what Reed has. Mm -hmm. Reed has been there. He's been in and around it. He's come up short. Now he's there. It's the the one thing that he doesn't have that would really kind of complete his career in terms of coaching. And I'm not suggesting he's leaving by any means. I think he's still younger and, 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 and wants to coach football. But that Super Bowl ring is hard to come by and hard to get to. If you're Kyle Shanahan, you got to believe with this young, talented San Francisco 49er team and a good, solid quarterback, he's probably going to get another time or two potentially. Mm-hmm. At least another time it appears to be. He'll have shots in the next couple of years. Andy Reid, it's how many times are you going to get that? And it's shown over the course of years he's gotten it, but it's a long time ago before he got back again with this Kansas City Chiefs team. So I think Andy Reid has it from an experience level. I think from a pressure level, though, he's a little bit of at a disadvantage because he's really going to harbor a lot of that. All right, so we've, this is our 21st show we've done. I think we've had Ty in studio for 20 of them. So, Ty, thanks for all your great uh, expertise and analysis all year long. Really appreciate it. It's and been fun. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a blast.